Hello, welcome to Tech Web Dots. Today, I am going to discuss monitor pattern, which is one of the Azure durable function pattern. So let's move ahead without wasting time. All the green sections I have already covered in my previous video sessions, and all the white one I will cover in my upcoming video session. And today, yes, as you already know, we are we going to discuss monitor pattern. So. There are some prerequisites and suggestions that I would like to share with you. I suggest you to take a pause of the screen and read all these suggested guidelines. For example, CLI tools should be there. You should enable a firewall to run the orchestration function and Azure emulator should be installed on your machine. Let's move ahead without wasting time. So for monitor pattern, as you can see in this image on the right hand side, it is saying it is the recurring process and it is calling the activity function again and again. And this is our orchestration function. So let's go by definition first. The monitor pattern refers to a flexible recurring process in a workflow. An example is a pooling until specific conditions are met. So this is very important point. One, this is for the long running queries and another one, it is recurring process. You can use a regular timer trigger as well to address a basic scenario such as a periodic cleanup job, but its interval is a static thing. instance lifetime become complex. So that's why you can use a durable function to create flexible recurrence intervals, managed task lifetime and create multiple monitor processes from a single orchestration. An example of the monitor pattern is to reverse the earlier async HTTP API scenario. If you followed my previous session, in that I have explained async HTTP API pattern as well. Okay, so in that pattern we were doing just opposite to this. So what we are doing here, instead of exposing an endpoint for an external client, to monitor a long running operation, the long running monitor consumes an external endpoint and then waits for a state changes. So this is what the primary difference between a sync HTTP API and monitor pattern. Monitor pattern not call itself, but it calls on the basis of what kind of configuration we have provided. Okay, so let's move ahead to see more details around this. You can see on the right hand side, this is the example that we're going to discuss today. But let's read a few more important points. You can use durable functions to create multiple monitors that observe arbitrary endpoint. Arbitrary endpoint means we are giving configuration and it is not that function is calling but function waits for certain, certain time. It checks for the expiry time as well. So once these conditions are met, only till then it is running okay the monitor can end execution when a condition met or another function can use the durable orchestration client to terminate the monitor so this is also possible with this pattern you can change a monitor wait interval based on a specific condition yes definitely at runtime we can configure the wait interval as well don't worry if these points are not clear i will share all these things in a practical manner don't worry when a request is received a new orchestration instance is created for that job id the instance pulls a status until and either a condition is met or a timeout expires. Yes, so condition is met. We are talking about this. For example, we want to check when job status is complete. We want to call another activity trigger or another function which is sent alert. Okay, and a timeout we are talking about the job expiry time. Okay, so, and we are providing the job ID as well in this. Okay, next a durable timer controls the pooling interval then more work can be performed or orchestration can end so all these kind of configuration we can provide let me show you all these points in a practical manner for you so let's jump into the visual studio to create the azure durable function with monitor pattern
I have created this monitor pattern okay but I made few adjustment and added some piece of code that I will explain first the first thing is I moved this HTTP trigger at the top okay why because when you will run this function we start with the HTTP trigger if you followed my previous sessions so HTTP trigger is the one which is pasted to the browser and our orchestration function when it will start okay so this is our http trigger and the name is monitor pattern underscore http okay and what it is expecting we have to provide the job id that my function can get from the query okay and then after checking if the job id is provided then it will work as expected and the job id is not given then it will give the bad request response okay then what we are doing here we are simply giving the expiry time which is 30 second means my function will run only for 30 second okay and you can increase it as per your need it can be 180 second it can be more okay here we are creating instance id by calling my orchestration function and as well as as an input if you will see in this method it is expecting a input variable okay and so as an input we are passing new instance of the job job is nothing but it's a very small class and that contains only two properties job id and expiry time so we are saying job id will be one that we will provide expiry time will be the current time plus 30 second okay it is clear now and here we are just logging this information and here we are hitting the orchestration function to check the status it will ultimately call my orchestration function before explaining the orchestration function i would like to explain we are creating this state let me just minimize this bar okay so here we are creating a concurrent dictionary which is which i am using to maintain the state of the job okay i will explain you how i am doing this so this is my orchestration trigger okay and here I am getting all my input data that I have added in my request. So this job will contain two properties, expiry time and job ID. Pooling interval is something that we are setting. Okay. And the purpose of this interval is every five seconds, we will check what is the status of our query. Okay. And my query will work only till the point when my current date time is less than the expiry time this is what we have decided okay expiry time is nothing but the current time plus 30 second and also we have specifying another condition when the job status is complete then we are calling another activity trigger which is send alert see send alert is a function name okay and it is also a activity trigger and in that you can call any third party messenger library through which you can send messages or you can store this message information in app inside as well using telemetry client okay and but before that what we are calling get job status so what is inside in get job status in get job status we are fetching the job id this is first thing get input by passing the string it will receive the job id let me place a break breakpoint here when we will run the solution i will show you what value it is getting and here we are adding the job id and its schedule and we are creating a dictionary here first time schedule will be added this will be key and it will save the value as a running next time when we will come here the input value will be running and it will get the completed status but in the actual scenario when you will be working for the production so you will use the durable entity don't worry i will discuss all about the durable entity in my upcoming video sessions but for now you can understand we are using the concurrent dictionary okay and this is the result that we are returning okay now the things are simple we added temporary time we added the int interval that we want to execute so let me run this solution to show you so as you can see this is already running let me show you a window this is the window that you always see when you are running your azure function this is a console window and as usual it is displaying my activity trigger which is get jobs and send alert and one orchestration trigger which is monitor job status and this is the url that we have to copy okay so i will copy this url and paste into the browser if i hit paste this url and hit enter so you will see this error we are not providing the job id so let me provide the job id now okay so we need to provide some value by passing question mark here let's suppose we are passing 100 and hit enter i am getting the breakpoint in my application in the application you can see 
if I hit F10 so I can see what input I am getting here okay this is the job ID that we have provided and it will be 100 and as I told you it will run in every 5 second for 30 second okay so let me run this so as you can see it is running after every 5 second and I can check the status of this job by simply looking into the final result let me go back to the browser if I copy this state URL from here and just copy this URL and paste into another tab here I am getting the final result so my runtime is completed job ID is 100 and this was the input that we have provided and if you will note here we added 30 second right so this is the time the function was created at 5 second 30 second we added means 35 so this was the expiry time so only between this time we run the solution if I recall once again so this is the HTTP trigger that we first time call and after that we call this orchestration trigger orchestration is running that get job status and if the status is complete then we are calling the send alert so don't worry about the piece of code the link of the github repo is the given in the description of this video I strongly suggest you to take this piece of code and do as much as experiment you can so i hope you like the video let's go back to the presentation i hope you like the video if you have any comment any suggestion then you can put into the comment box and i will reply on that as soon as possible your feedback is the only inspiration for me to create such videos so i will see you in the next session where we will discuss human interaction durable function pattern okay till then bye bye